hello welcome to this class where we are so far talking about how we can handle the owing bottles to measure some quantity of the sample to be analyzed so one such technique what we can consider is owing by difference so what does it mean basically we'll see in this particular class that we have a sample owing bottle which can be empty okay then we put some amount of sample in it therefore we get sample plus owing bottle so if we take the initial weight of that that means the w1 what is that w1 will be the sample plus the owing bottle the weight of the sample plus owing bottle so it is say certain amount of grams say 25.6721 grams say then what we do we just basically without introducing anything in between we want to transfer that particular sample directly to the reaction vessel or the conical flux where we can go for titration when we go for titrimetric analysis or we can use that directly for the solution preparation in volumetric flask so the problem is how we can directly transfer this particular sample to this reaction flask the allenmeyer flask or the conical flask or the corresponding volumetric flask so it has the marking over here and we all know that it has the stopper also so without using anything any filter paper any watch glass or any other boat aluminum foil boat or anything we directly want to transfer sample from this sample bottle plus sample to it then this is the first weight that means it is the first weight of your sample plus owing bottle then we slowly transfer some amount in this conical flux or in this volumetric flux to make a volume of say 250 ml for making solutions we all know that we can make primary standard solution or sometime secondary standard solution once again we will discuss all these in detail when we go into the corresponding chapters where we can discuss about the volumetric analysis or titrimetric analysis of any unknown sample where the analyte can be your mineral or analyte can be metal ion or analyte can be something else so what you can see from here is that you have w1 then you get w2 because the difference between these two will give you the w delta w which is actually being transferred to all this flask that means weight we should know nicely then when we make or measure the volume this up to 250 ml we can say that this much amount of solute or analyte has been transferred to these containers to make a solution of known strength because this will be of known <coughs> of known strength so after this transfer what will happen you have 
the weight which is less so say it is 24.1325 gram so the first weight and this can be your second weight or sometime we call it as initial weight and this as the final weight. So, this amount of that sample which is W we know this particular one and that should be very close to the sample what we will be requiring to get some solution when we make some primary standard solutions we all know that we have some idea to make a DC normal solution n by 10 strength. So, to make a DC normal solution how much weight of these samples suppose the two concrete examples we can take that weight of say K 2 C R 2 O 7 or disodium salt of oxalic acid. To make a standard solution of these because this is a primary standard sample this is also a primary standard sample. So, depending upon their molecular weight, we know that how much is their corresponding equivalent weight and based on that equivalent weight, we can transfer the required amount of that particular sample. So, when we get this, suppose this particular so disodium salt or oxalic acid dihydrate, you know this W and the amount required that means W 1 which should be very close to this W 1. So, weight taken W by W 1 will be your strength of the solution what we are going to make. So, if it is in the range of this n by 10, so there will be a factor we call it as some factor x into n by 10. So, that is a very simple technique where we go for the sample preparation or solution preparation by difference. So, this difference basically tells us something where we get that first the bottle and its contents were just now I told you. So, this is in the written form so that you can good nice note of it. So, sample is then transferred from bottle to the container. So, after taking the weight of the sample with that of your owing bottle you transfer some amount to those fluxes. So, this is the typical technique. So, this is taken again from the book of Skooks. So, Skooks book is the photograph is there how we can transfer we have the gloves protected hands and we have some forcep and this is the sample which is given to you in a owing bottle. So, in our previous class what we have seen that how we use the weighing bottle and after that particular weight that means after the initial weight that means the sample and the sample vial or the weighing bottle you transfer this directly to this Aldenmeyer flask. So, this you do first then how to transfer this. So, this particular terminology because we have some uh, terminology which is associated for any other technique of this class. We find that tapping of the bottle with its top and slight rotation of the bottle, how you control of transferring the solid powder matter. If it is your potassium dichromate or oxalic acid or sodium oxalate, what we see that slowly we can transfer to this particular sample uh, container and where we know that if we want to say 1.2258 gram of transferring this sample slowly we should transfer these otherwise the whole lump will come out from the weighing bottle and will fall on this conical flask. So, control over the amount of sample to be removed. So, it is with practice you can do it so, because in the very first time you cannot do that but you have to do that direct transfer of the sample from the owing bottle to the conical flask. So, then we see after this transfer the bottle and the residual contents are weighed that means what I just now told you that this is your second or final weight. You have the initial weight that is your first weight and after transfer you have the second weight. So, then 
the mass of the sample is your delta w. So, mass of the sample is the difference between the two masses. So, these two masses that means delta w between the first weight and the second weight is the actual amount of the solid sample what you can transfer to this particular conical flask. So, in the same way if your sample is not a solid one, if it is a liquid one, liquid which is can be non volatile also because otherwise it can uh, volatilize in air. So, that can also be transferred by this particular method, but only thing is that how to dispense it in a drop wise fashion, but it is most convenient way of doing is that you can transfer everything from the solid and it should be very uh, fine in powdery form because the grain size should be less otherwise a big grain can change your weight difference much and you your factor would be above 1 because what we are looking for here in this particular factor what we are getting over here this we can consider as factor it should be close to 1. So, if by mistake you take less amount you can control your transfer and such that you can reach to up to this particular value of 1 otherwise you can have it factor of 1.1, 1.12, 1.15 or 1.2 such that. So, because what we are looking for because when we will be titrating the, this particular thing your sample strength that means the uh, analyte and the titer should have a very similar strength. Suppose we want to analyze something that means your sample concentration in within this conical flux is in the decimolar uh, decinormal solution. So, your reagent concentration or the titer concentration should also be of the decinormal strength. So, this weight by difference once we do we can also use something because this we are discussing about the different tools and where we see that for the different tools how we basically make the solution we have the volumetric flux and we have the uh, conical flux. But if we have a desiccator, so that we are basically looking for that how to keep your sample inside a desiccator that means in within a dry atmosphere. So, these we are seeing from our previous class these are our weighing bottle. So, weighing bottles we have seen that we can have two types of weighing bottle one is capped from above and another is the normal uh, uh, lid. So, this is the solid sample you consider that you can have uh, potassium dichromate within it and another one is oxalic acid and you see that uh, this cover has been opened this cover is also opened up because your inside of this weighing bottle inside of this weighing bottle should be in the environment of this desiccator. So, this particular container we call it as a desiccator where we put some desiccant such that this particular environment within this particular uh, unit is dry and moisture free. So, you have the lid this is the lid which, which you can take out and on the rim basically you, this is the ground glass joining this all are ground glass joining and it is basically nicely greased such that no air can air and moisture can go inside. So, when we are not performing the wing operation what you can do you can do these samples you can put these samples inside the desiccator such that your potassium dichromate or oxalic acid can be kept in a dry condition because otherwise we can we know something depending upon the environment if there is a high moisture content in the atmosphere the relative humidity of that particular day is very high this particular thing can trap some amount of moisture. So, this moisture weight will also be taken into account if we are not having some dry sample. So, how we get this desiccator? So, desiccators having some desiccant is a hygroscopic substance that induces a dry state. That means, if you have a hygroscopic matter which put inside, so there is a some dicks over it. So, porcelain dicks is there and above that we keep the sample, but you have holes created on this porcelain disc, 
but the desiccant we can put such as calcium chloride. So, calcium chloride desiccant we can use over there and that particular one we all know that is a nice material which can trap moisture easily from the environment. So, the base section what is that base section? This is a base section contains a chemical drying agent. So, this is the base such that as I told you it can be your anhydrous calcium chloride, it can be calcium sulphate or anhydrous magnesium perchlorate or phosphorus pentoxide. So, when we do that means we can have some amount of calcium chloride in this particular base. So, solid calcium chloride and above that we have this particular porcelain disc with some holes over it and and this is the base basically and where we put this particular sample. So, this is keeping something very dry atmosphere inside the desiccator, but what we find that sometimes we need further drying of this particular environment such that a precipitate you can have and which has been filtered recently. So, this precipitate which is filtered recently initially you dry it in air. So, some amount of moisture or some amount of water which is being trapped inside the corresponding precipitate is dried then you can put inside this particular desiccator. So, this desiccator you can have this cover. So, you open up this and you put this particular material over there and what you find that if this is not enough that means, calcium chloride has some capacity to trap moisture. So, it is basically trapping the moisture, but if we can use some other desiccant which is superior than that of this calcium chloride, what we can put we have this base basically and there we can put some watch glass or petri dress where we put a second desiccant. So, this is the first desiccant your calcium chloride is your first desiccant and the second one which is more hygroscopic such that white powder of phosphorus pentoxide. So, okay. so, this white powder you can put inside this and you can keep sample over here, you can keep sample over here and you can keep sample over here. So, within few hours or within overnight your sample that means, the precipitate is dry enough. So, you make it dry you get the powder sample which is pretty dry. So, this particular sample is the powder or a very dry sample you can get. So, when you have along with calcium chloride you can also use a secondary or a second desiccant which is your P 2 O 5. Okay. So, this magnesium perchlorate or phosphorus pentoxide is not that separately we are using phosphorus pentoxide. So, along with calcium chloride we can use this particular phosphorus pentoxide for a very good uh, 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 dry atmosphere within the desiccator. Next we can do something where we can know the about the tools that how you go for filtration. So, filtration we all know that there are several things the first thing how we can explain the process of filtration. Okay. So, we are discussing or we are talking to you from the very beginning of our class that you can have Ni 2 plus in solution which is unknown amount and we want to determine the corresponding concentration of this Ni 2 plus. So, we give some reagent. So, if you have this solution which is aqua solution of certain concentration of Ni 2 plus and this 
is giving you a very clear solution. So, this solution is definitely a clear solution, but to know this how you know this filtration basically. So, this filtration technique what we can see that you must have a precipitate in it which is insoluble in aqueous medium. So, how to do that? You just add the known reagent every day I am just talking about when we try to give some example. Now, just you see what is that. So, which is nothing but D M G H 2 dimethyl glyoxime. So, this will bind to this nickel 2 plus and give you a reddish pink precipitate. So, you get the precipitate of N i L 2 where this is your L H 2 you have two protons attached to this oxime function which can be removed. So, once you get this precipitate now your challenge is coming. So, you have the clear solution then you have the PPT then we want to do the filtration that means filter we can do. So, before that what you can see that what is in your hand that means the uh, apparatus you can see what are the apparatus and the medium through which you can filter it out and how to do that because somebody if he does not know if he or she does not know how to filter something by this particular thing. So, this is a very important part that means you require some apparatus and the medium through which you can perform the filtration because there are several things starting from your filter paper what you know from your school days and you know that we must use the funnel and the funnel and the filter paper is one combination then we can have the filtering crucibles the goods crucibles where the bed the filtering bed is already there within the funnel uh, that uh, made of glass we can directly filter through that particular bed that means we consider it as a special name and how we can use that particular thing. So, two things are there just we will be slowly discussing we will just going to that that once you have the filtration and in this particular slide we have written something else also that ignition of solids. So, that I will come there that how we can have some solid which is being filtered. So, the filtered solid you can burn to get some information related to your analysis. So, as I told you the apparatus what you can have the simple crucibles you can have if we just go for this ignition process. So, these simple crucibles are of different types you can have porcelain you can have alumina you can have silica you can have platinum crucibles what they do they maintain a constant mass that means constant mass platinum crucibles taking in a constant mass within the limits of experimental error definitely you can have the error bar when you go for the owing process used principally to convert a precipitate into a suitable owing form. So, what does it mean basically and how it is related to filtration. So, what we are looking for that we should go for filtration and as I told you just now that we can have NiL2 the nickel dimethyl glyoxime in your hand and we want to get a dry powder sample of this and if we are able to take the weight in particular form from that particular weight by knowing the molecular weight of the complex you can find out the amount of nickel present in the complex or amount of nickel present in the 
original sample what we are analyzing. But this is something because filtration we are now tagging with ignition. And when we will detail discussion we will make for some technique where we can do that particular analysis by taking the weight. So, owing is a very important thing in all these cases because by weight we are trying to determine the corresponding concentration of the metal ion in a precipitate which is your metal complex. So, this particular owing process is related to something else also because I have not told you that at why how you dry it is it we are just keeping in the desiccator or you dry it or heat it at particular temperature. So, in actual practice I told you in one of my previous class that you can dry it at 110 to 120 degree in air oven. Then you take the weight once it get give you the corresponding constant weight that also I told you that what the constant weight means. So, in this particular form if something is not readily available in this crystalline form because this nickel DMG is a very crystalline form and a very powdered form and it is not contaminated. So, it is less contaminated. It is less contaminated by the other species which is present in the solution. But if we can go for estimation of Fe 3 plus what we can do we can provide them sufficient amount of hydroxide ions in say ammonium chloride you know the common ion effect because this is a particular reagent for group separation during the identification of Fe 3 plus in qualitative analysis. So, in quantitative analysis of Fe 3 plus if we put ammonium chloride and ammonium hydroxide mixture we will be getting ferric hydroxide precipitate the brown precipitate of ferric hydroxide. So, that precipitate you can have now the opportunity to filter it out and once you filter it out if it has a very definite composition like that of your NiL2 you can take the direct weight by taking it in some filter paper or in gauge crucible because here we will use something which is known as gauge crucible because we are talking about the crucibles we will see what is known as Gruch crucible which is a sintered bed crucible there we filter it out and take the direct weight. So, weight of this particular form, but it is not so easy to get because this is basically forming what we should know here that initially when ferric ion is present in the solution we have hexa echo ion. hexa echo ferric 3 ion was present in it and slowly one after another is removing from here as hydroxide ion. So, what is precipitating out is not a monomeric form is a polymeric and condensed form where this iron because this is the iron what you see and is also interesting to know here also because we do not know most of the time that when you have the 6 water molecules are bound. So, basically we get a center and 6 water molecules these are the oxygens of water which are bound to the iron center giving a corresponding hexa echo species. So, what about this? This is basically precipitating out. So, this actual composition of this ferric hydroxide is not that even if we consider only the corresponding number of water molecules present in it. So, what we get? We get this particular form because you cannot disturb the corresponding 6 positions around this iron because iron will always be hexa coordinated. So, it will be hexa 
coordinated. So, what we should know that whatever we write in the book and whatever we see in the book and whatever we write is the with the ferric hydroxide, but it is not the actual form. It has some water molecules attached to it. Even if you write something as 3 H 2 O, it is very difficult to write that in the exact form. That means, the exact formula and exact formula weight like your nickel DMG complex is not known for your ferric hydroxide. It may have several number of H 2 O molecule and also it is not that always you can have 3 hydroxide groups because the 3 hydroxide groups are required to precipitate it out, but you can have 2 plus 4 water molecules also. So, it is basically is a not a very pure form you get. So, this we can do then that you apply ignition and you convert this particular species to Fe 2 O 3 at a high temperature. So, this is the corresponding procedure where you have the definite formula of this Fe 2 O 3 we know and it is also a typical gravimetric technique and how we can use the different types of crucibles that we can see and what type of crucible we can select for this that means, weighing of the precipitate and its ultimate conversion to Fe 3 O 4 which you can weigh out for its percentage of iron present in the original sample of Fe 3 plus. Okay, thank you very much.